Welcome everyone to the USU podcast. This is Julie Riesler. I am so excited for today's guest and I know you're going to be as well. So let me tell you a little bit about Matt. Matt Johnson is a marketer, an entrepreneur, he's a musician and podcast host and expert. As founder of Pursuing Results, a podcast PR and production agency based in San Diego, Matt runs a worldwide virtual team helping business coaches and agencies break in and dominate new markets through podcasting. Matt currently hosts and co-hosts niche business shows such as the UX Podcast and Real Estate Uncensored. He also speaks to experts and entrepreneurs on how to turn a rock star business into a UX machine. As a featured, featured podcast guest, he speaks to audiences around the U.S., Canada, and Australia. So, so excited to have you today, Matt. I uh, psyched to learn from you and, and dive in. Yeah, me too. It's going to be fun. It's going to be really fun. I love that I'm wearing like the biggest headphones possible and you have like the way- you, you have a little bit of the Russian helicopter pilot and Rambo 2 going on. That's all right. <laughs> I know. It's like, I really need to do whatever you're doing because these things are humongous. They just do block out the sound really, really well, which I like. I, I have the solution for you. Uh, yeah, there's a great pair of earbuds that do the same thing and they're like 12 bucks on Amazon. They're fantastic. Oh. All right, we're going to talk about that later. We'll have it in the mm. LinkedIn for anyone who's thinking of starting a podcast or wants to be on them. I would love that because these yeah. things, they kind of got to go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they're, they're quite large. <laughs> they're huge. They're like earmuffs. They're, I mean, and it's hot here. I don't need earmuffs. So, exactly. all right. Well, they work. So I'll use them for now. I'll get the $12 Amazon link later. Um, this is going to be fun. All right. So let's dive in. One yeah. of the questions, I love that, you know, you have the whole plan, you as well. I'm, my, you know, my take is just this idea of your best self, your truest self, your newest you. And I'm curious, you know, what does that mean to you? What does that look like to you? Uh, I would love to hear your thoughts. Yeah, well, and it's it's similar to the reason why I called my brand UX, um, which is, you know, for those of us that are like experts and entrepreneurs, and we're out here, kind of in this world where we want freedom and impact, and you know, like we want to have a business that has meaning and actually makes a dent in the world, um, a business that also allows us to be who we are, and uh, so that's that's really what what the mission of UX is. I think part of being your US to you is the ability to build a business around yourself that is an expression of, of who you are. You know, I, I know that's what I want. And the interesting thing is that if you look at a business, no matter how big or small it is, it actually is an expression of usually the founder or the entrepreneur, or the person who's at the center of everything. The difference is, is it intentionally that way or does it happen by default, right? Uh, and and that's, that's kind of what I want to do is I want to intentionally build a business and a life that allows me to like, stay in my X factors, the things that I'm really good at and enjoy doing, right? I want to spend as much time as though in those as possible. I want to do it for the people that find those things the most valuable. And I want to do it for people that I genuinely love to be around. Um, I want to work with and serve the kind of people that I would go out and have a drink with or coffee with later on after hours, right? So my clients often end up being, you know, friends because that's the kind of people that I work with. And to me, I think that's the ideal for a lot of us. We don't necessarily know how to get there, we, but that is kind of the, you know, when I talk to experts and entrepreneurs, that's the ideal that we have in our head is a business that allows us to be our USU. Awesome. Yeah, I know that was really well said. And I think... It, you know, to me also what you're talking about is aligning your strengths, aligning who you are. When that happens, um, that's for at least what I've seen and felt is that's where the synergy and the magic happens is being able to do mm -hmm. that. Yeah, it, exactly. And th there's a couple elements that I think if we are, if we're cre like creative people, uh, I think struggle with this a lot. Um, and also like ca uh, caregivers. Mm -hmm. So people who, who care very deeply about the, the people that they serve. I was actually thinking about this today when I was thinking about what you and I were going to talk about. And there, so I'm, I, I fall into more of the creator side. Like I want to do something that's, that's, you know, f very fulfilling and has an impact on people. And I also want to explore. So I'm always, you know, kind of dabbling and stuff like that. Uh, and then you have the caregivers that want to have an impact on people. So what it usually ends up happening is if we fall into one of those two camps, we end up getting like either freedom or impact and never both, right? Uh, which is always interesting to me. Um, I tend to be like, I, I put a 
pretty high premium on freedom. So I have like, I've got control of my time, control of my finances, control of my location and stuff like that. Um, but I also want to have a big impact on people. And to me, it comes back to the, the, the problem that we solve and how we choose to solve it. You know, how, how are we adding value to people's life? How are we being helpful? How are we being useful? Because if we choose the, if we choose the wrong way to be useful and helpful, we can end up getting like all kinds of time freedom. We might get location freedom, but we don't have impact. We might have impact, but we don't actually get any freedom for ourselves because all we're doing is pouring ourselves into other people and we're never pouring into ourselves. And so that, that to me, I mean, that's, that's why I started my podcast is to share what I'm learning and what the people that I'm seeing in my world that are really good at that are doing to have all of it, to have all the freedom and all the impact that we want, which like I said, I mean, if for, for those of us that are kind of out here in the entrepreneurial space or freelancing or any, any, any place where you have control over kind of how your business and life looks like, um, to me, that's what we all want. Yeah, I really um, appreciate what you just said. I'm thinking, you know, for those listening that might be thinking, okay, how do, where do I begin? How do I get yeah. all three? How do I get freedom? How do I get, you know, all of what you just said, how do you get all of that impact? How do you make sure that you have the three legs on the stool, not two? <laughs> um, so, so to me, it comes, it starts with like understanding the, that like on un, this unbreakable link between the problem that we solve and the level of freedom and impact that we have. And, and that like, to me, that, that is a secret. Um, and one of the ways that we can uncover the problem that we solve really well for people or how, how other people find us the most valuable is just to watch what they come and beat down our door about. I mean, I can remember years ago when I was just, uh, I had just left the agency uh, that I was with. I started a podcast. This, was, this would have been circa four years ago. And I was just kind of, I was out on my own. I was doing consulting. I was podcasting and yada, yada. And my, one of my mentors that I used to work for came back to me and said, look, I, I see what you're doing. I want you to do this for me. Here's what I want to do. Let's do it in four different industries. Uh, and he basically just, you know, like beat me down and convinced me to, to take him on as a client. So that he like shoved money at me to do what he wanted me to do. Uh, that's a pretty good indication that we're doing something that other people find valuable is when they beat down our door and say, no, no, I don't care what you say. Like, I'm going to pay you a pile of money and you're going to do this for me because this is incredibly valuable to me. So stop talking, stop, shut up and just do it. Uh, and that's exactly what I did. And uh, he's also the one that told me, hey, you need to take this and package it up and sell it to other people because they need this just as much as I do after it worked gangbusters for a few months. Uh, and that's, it, that's just, it's like an open door. You know, we can choose to go through it or not. Uh, but the bottom line is that one of the best indications to figure out where people think we're really valuable is just watch what they ask us to do. I love it. I was just, it's so funny. I was just having a conversation with somebody who's just starting to get into her career and we were talking about that and it's the yeah. best, it's such great, such great wisdom because that really does tell you, that tells you your strengths, it tells you where you're needed and, and hopefully that cross section, you know, the intersection of what you love to do and where people, like you said, that guy who's ready to pay you a pile of money, like that's where the intersection is, um, mm -hmm. which is so cool. So I know that you, you know, moved to San Diego, you have a podcasting production company. What, um, what is that, I guess, the, the vision for you, if you were to look at your USU in the next year, or a couple of years or fast forward, how do you want that to show up, make an impact? What does that look like for you? So for me, it means obviously developing myself to where I can be more authentic and focus even, even more of my time within the business on the things that I do best. And, and actually content like, like doing this uh, is one of my goals for the next year or so is just to get out there and talk more, speak more. Um, so I've spoken, you know, US, Canada, Australia and stuff like that. That's fun. It's fun for me. It's especially fun when I get to talk to really sharp experts and entrepreneurs mm -hmm. and, and just share what I'm learning and what I'm doing. So I want to do more of that because that that's where I get that sense of fulfillment and impact is being able to talk to people, watch them go implement and, and do some of the things that we talked about and then seeing the results. Um, in order for me to do that, the business has to be able to grow without me pushing the rock up the hill, which means I have to have systems in place that bring people into my world without me having to go out and spend all of my time chasing them down. So that's the other, the other part of it is to keep getting, because the operations of the business, I've already systematized to the point where I spend about two half a days a week 
in the actual operations of the business, just maintaining and working with new clients and stuff like that. The rest of the time I'm focused on like the next step, which is great. It's a great position to be in. Now I need to get the sales marketing of the business to that point, uh, which is where a lot of experts and entrepreneurs struggle is, is we struggle to get out of, we struggle to get out of operations really bad. Yeah. Um, and we, there's a whole conversation we could have around that. But even once we do that, then we end up spending all of our time feeling like we're in sales and marketing, like, oh man, all I'm doing is chasing people around. I'm creating all this content and all this stuff. Uh, and we never get, we, you know, if we manage to pull ourselves out of operations, the actual doing of the thing, then we spend all the rest of our time marketing the thing and we still don't feel like we're getting a bunch of traction. And so to me, it all comes down, especially for me and my personality, it just comes down to doing what I do best, which is systems. That's, that's just how my personality expresses itself. And so once I figured that out, then I realized, okay, well, now I just need to infuse every aspect of the business with that thing. Like that's one of my X factors. That's one of my unique skills and abilities that I have that I just gravitate to naturally. So let's build the entire business, even the sales and marketing piece around what I already do naturally. So for me, that system. So guess what? I'm putting sales and marketing systems in place. Mm -hmm. If I was already really good at just going out and networking and generating a bunch of business by being friendly and talking, I wouldn't need, to, I, you know, I wouldn't gravitate towards systems, right? So everybody's a little bit different, but the bottom line is I'm, I'm like, building the business around the things that I do best rather than trying to fit myself into a box of what somebody else tries to tell me I should do because man, that's tempting. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I'm so with you. Even listening yeah. to you, I'm like, uh, I wish I was designed with some system thinking. <laughs> that is not my strength. I'm like the other piece talking to people do it all day long. I love it. <laughs> Systems piece. I'm like, shoot, that is right yeah. where I know. Um, well, here's the good news is the good news is you can hire systems people. Yes. Um, yeah. The, yeah, the intangible part of really being able to go out and make it rain just by talking to people and being friendly and fun and, you know, like have, being energetic and stuff like that, being outgoing. You can't teach that. Um, so for any, for anybody that's listening, that feels like they're more like you than they are like me, the good news is just go do your thing, go sell and market. And you can always hire, <laughs> hire an operations person that can build the systems for you. Right. 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 Well, it's interesting. So two things, one, you mentioned X factor. Is that kind of what that's related to the UX is sort of that mm -hmm. X factor? Is that yeah. Cause that's where I think everything starts. Yeah. So I would, I would call an X factor is our, our unique ability, skill, or attribute. Cause so it could be something innate about us. It could be something we've developed and sharpened over time, but either way, something about us that is that kind of zone of genius or our superpower. So that helped if that helps clarify, cause that to me, that's, that's really the beating heart of any successful life or successful business is yeah. that, that little zone where we can stay in where it's unique skills, attributes, and abilities for us. Well, I'm even thinking, Matt, with what you're saying. So if you're list, someone's listening and perhaps, you know, they're right now not an entrepreneur, or maybe mm -hmm. uh, decide to raise kids for the time or whatever's going on in their life that we all have those X factors and they can show up whether it's a business or not. And so yeah. Like you said earlier, seeing what people come to you for. And then, mm -hmm. you know, I always, I think you were saying this as well, what gives you energy? Where do you feel yeah. like you're energized? And that's a good yep. indication. Um, I am not energized by systems. I got to be real yeah. honest. As you were saying it, I'm like, damn, I wish that was part of my makeup. But, but that's okay. But see, when you're, <laughs> as you're listening, you just you go to what your strength is, is mm -hmm. what you're saying, and you play there. Yeah, hundred percent. You know, like, like my sister is a great example of this. Um, so she is a stay at home mom slash uh, daycare, like self-employed daycare provider. Right. Mm. And so she, she takes after my, my dad and my, me and her both take after my dad a lot. And she's like, she's very, I, I didn't realize this until she got older, but she's also kind of gravitated and, and is very kind of orderly and very, very systematic. Um, but no, like she doesn't go out, she's not an entrepreneur, you know, in the sense that she's going out and building the next Facebook or something like that. But she's also the only person I know that can take eight kids to the zoo by herself. Oh my God. <laughs> and, and, not, and not drive her, not drive herself insane. Like the kids are orderly. She knows exactly what she's doing. Everything has its place. And so it's funny how the, those things pop out. And so she runs a business that just fits like a glove into her life. Uh, in, fact, in fact, we call her the child whisperer. Um, oh, that's so great. Oh my God, everyone <laughs> listening, is she in Omaha, Matt? She's or in she's... Omaha, yeah. Okay, because I know you're from there originally. I'm like, uh, where was she when my kids were young? I, I could have used um, that child whisperer. Yeah, she's a genius. That, like, that's yeah. her genius. Her genius is getting, getting kids to do what she wants them to do and fit into 
her life. That's like, that's her genius. So that she found a way to kind of monetize what she's good at and build it within the structure of her life. So she's very, very smart. And it just started with her deciding kind of what kind of life that she wanted and figuring out, okay, how do I, how do I monetize what I want to do anyway, which is stay home with my kids. Like, well, yeah, and, and a lot of people have that same thought. Well, great. I'll, I'll, you know, I'll do some babysitting. I'll, I'll work from home or I'll open up a daycare and things like that. Um, where I think that she's different is she really figured out what she's really good at and then baked that in right into the ingredients of her business. Mm. It's a great example. And I'm just thinking for anyone listening, this could be very applicable. It could even be, you know, there's something that you love to do and that you're really good at. And maybe it's a hobby or it's a side hustle. It doesn't have to be a full blown business. It could just be, yeah. or maybe you decide to volunteer and use that. But I think mm -hmm. um, such a great example with her I am wondering, you know, I'm always curious about the bumps in the road and how you got to where you are. And maybe there's something you're comfortable sharing. Were there times when you didn't feel as connected to your you as to you or who you are now? What did that look like? Oh, man. Um, okay. And lessons learned, you know, I mean, whatever you want to share. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. So there's, there's a time, I'll give a quick example just from yesterday and then, and then maybe I'll share something from years ago. So yesterday I was having one of those moments where you're like, you know, I'm putting a lot of work in, in a certain area. I'm not seeing the results yet. So I was getting, I was getting that kind of that, you know, mm, like, man, I really don't want to put, I don't, I don't want to put more work into this right now. Cause you're, you're already feeling all the, all the pain and not experiencing the results yet. And, um, there was a great, a great phrase uh, that came to mind and it was, do not be weary in well-doing, which, which is a, you know, that's a, it's a scripture verse. You know, I, I, I had to look it up where it was because it's been so many years since I thought about it or, or had it come to mind. And, you know, I, and I think that the whole verse is, you know, let us not be weary in well-doing for in due time we'll reap if we don't faint. Right. So in other words, keep going. If we, as long as we don't give up, you know, before the race is over, we're going to, we're going to reap the results of, of all the work that we put in and it reminded me of something that my, my coach said, and it's some old Chinese proverb. It's like, Hey, like in, in a journey of a hundred miles, 90 miles is actually halfway. Mm. And so that, then that came to mind. I'm like, okay. So it's one of those, it's one of those things where if, if, if it's easy, sometimes if the work that we're putting in is easy, it might be because we're kind of in the early stages and it's going to be easy in the early stages all the emotions there we're excited we're hyped up like it's gonna be awesome you know we're thinking about the end result we haven't really hit the hard work yet then we hit the hard work and then the hard work keeps going for a while and we still are not at the finish line where we get to reap all the rewards that's probably the hardest part um, I've gone through a few periods in my life right like that and I would say towards the tail end of what I would consider my music career you know, where I was really going after it and, and trying to hit it hard and become a pro musician was like that, where I felt like I'd put in the work and wasn't seeing the reward. And, uh, you know, like I look back on that time and, and wonder, you know, what would have happened if I kept going? Now, I don't think it's necessarily the best thing, you know, for my life. I'm, I'm pretty happy with the way things are going. Um, but, you know, you always have those times when you look back. And yeah, it's, 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 extremely important to be able to go back and look at who you are and what you really want and be able to reconnect with that. And in those times, be able to say, okay, look, I, I know who I am. I know where I'm going. And maybe I'm just in mile 90 right now. And I just need to push through until I hit mile 100. And then the finish line and all the results and all the, all the amazing feelings and the victory and the, and the rewards that come with finishing the race. Like you just keep pushing through. That's awesome. Yeah. Oh, I, I, uh, man, do I resonate. So it's, it's, uh, I love that quote. I thought you're going to say the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. And I'm like, Oh no, no, you just like reframed it. It's basically yeah. 99 miles is halfway. Is that what you said? Yeah. Nine, nine, in a, in a hundred mile journey, 90 miles is halfway. Like right. the, in other words, the last 10% feels like it's about halfway. Right. I totally relate to that. Sure that, yeah, that funny quote. Oh my yeah. God, that is well said. Um, yeah. Yeah. I wish I'd I, take credit. I wish I could take credit. <laughs> like that's way smarter than me. Well, it's great. That's why, but you know, sharing it, hopefully people listen to it. It's an in, yeah. it's impact. That's, the word. Yeah. that's what it's about. Um, was there yeah. a story you wanted to share about younger, earlier times, maybe a struggle that you went through? I, I don't know if there is mm. one. And, um, yeah, well, it's interesting because like, you know, so I mentioned that I kind of left my, left the agency I used to work for and got out on my own, started doing consulting. 
And what I realized, it took me about a year of being out of that, out, out of working for somebody else to even really figure out what my own X factors were. And it's funny when they finally dawned on me, because I, I asked myself, what, what, does the business need from me the most? And, and so in other words, like what are the three most valuable things that I actually bring to the table? Like, well, you know, why does anybody work for me? Why do clients hire me? Uh, if I could hire everybody, if I could literally hire somebody to do everything in the business, wh like what's left for me? Like, where do I really add value? And I figured out what those three things were in my case. And then when I looked back and realized, oh, wait a minute, those are the same three things that my mentor who I used to work for was really good at and seven years further along in development of me. So you know, like sometimes in order to really figure out who we are and who our USU is, uh, you know, we have, sometimes we have to slay the mentor, you know, uh, sometimes we have to get out from under the people that we idolize and put them up on a pedestal, um, because it, it keeps us from seeing who we really are. Uh, and I, I, I didn't realize that's what I'd done, but that's what I had to do. Uh, I had to get out from under working directly for somebody else who happened to have my same exact, you know, superpowers essentially, uh, for them, for them to even reveal themselves to me. Mm. And it, I, I wish I could say that that's the same for everybody, but I do think it's different. Everybody kind of uncovers our, our X factors a little bit differently. There's different doorways that kind of, yeah. uh, it, appear in each of our lives. That that's what it was for me. Uh, if, if, you know, if anybody's listening and they never go and start their own business, that doesn't mean you won't figure out what those are. It just means the path is a little bit different. Yeah. Uh, cause I do think it's different for all of us. Absolutely. I'm curious, you know, something I'm, I'm always interested about is, is, you know, energy and how when my experience has been when I am living my me me in my X factor sweet spot, it's, it feels like I have endless energy. Um, it's just a whole different world to be in versus, um, I mean, I had a great job. I was with a, a fortune 500 company for 11 years, director of recruiting, not bad at all. It just, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't a hundred percent. It felt like yeah. it was 92%. I felt passionate about it. And there was a big difference when I decided to do what I'm doing now. And I'm curious to leave that place where you probably were comfortable and then start your own. I'm imagining difference in how you felt. Uh, it was very, un yeah, it was very uncomfortable. Uh, and still is. Um, I would not consider myself like a natural entrepreneur. I, I don't have what I would think of as a very roller coaster life that you hear about, like a lot of other entrepreneurs have where, you know, like the James Altucher thing where he's a millionaire and then lost a million dollars and then became a millionaire again and then lost another million. Like I have no, I have no interesting stories like that of becoming and then losing millions of dollars. Um, and, and believe me, like if you, if you pay attention to that world, you can actually give yourself a complex for not being weird enough. Uh, right. Or, because I know so many entrepreneurs that are ADHD and dyslexic and I'm like, I'm just sitting over here going, I like, I like to read. I, I, I like to go to the library. I like my Starbucks in the afternoon. <laughs> but like you said, they're also looking at that going, man, I wish I was more systematic. So we always want what we can't have. We always, we always think the grass is greener on the other side. It never is. Um, I think the best path is to just focus on who we really are, what makes the most difference to us and what turn. And, and, and like you said, when we look at our life, whether we're in business or not, whether we're an entrepreneur or not, if we look at our life and you realize that like just getting out of bed in the morning, like takes a lot of energy out of me. I'm not looking forward to what I'm doing. That, that's a huge indication that we're out of position. That's not necessarily a bad thing. A lot of times the frustration is what births the change. Uh, that's something I heard Tony Robbins say, uh, and it stuck with me. I think I came across that like a year ago. And he said something to the effect of, look, when I, when I feel myself getting really frustrated, I also get really excited because it means that something in my life is not right, but it's about, but the solution is about to present itself. The frustration is like the birthing process of like unearthing the solution from my unconscious mind. And that like hit me like a ton of bricks. I'm like, holy cow. Like anytime I'm frustrated, you can literally reframe that and go, look, my, my unconscious mind is working on the solution right now. It's only a matter of time until it's going to pop up and then just be ready to act on it. So fantastic. That is so great. I, I also, I didn't hear it that way. It's funny. I'm hearing him uh, uh, in the DC area next week. Uh, right. awesome. Wednesday here. Um, but I have a similar thing around, you know, whether it's quote unquote, I don't think of anything as a failure. I think of it as, you know, learning. Um, but if there's yeah. something frustrating, oh yeah, it's like, all right. And it can still be frustrating, but I love what you just said. And it's that, it's that, all right. So what, what is about to expand or change for the better? Yeah. You know, yeah. and that's a whole different way to look at it. Yeah, love um, it. 
That's so cool, God. I like I could just talk to you for hours. I so love your energy, and you know, thank you for being so authentic and real and just talking about like that's okay. They're not a weird entrepreneur, Matt. Like that is. <laughs> Hope so. I, <laughs> hey, you know, it's funny. I'll just share when I I did um, a TEDx talk in Austin, and it was all mm -hmm. about you know it had to be. Um, like, what can you share that's weird? I'm like, of course, keep Austin weird, baby. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, I don't really know. I mean, I'm weird a little, I, mean, I know I'm weird, but I'm not sure what I'm sharing is weird. And then I thought, well, getting a PhD in you, that's the name of my book. That's a little weird. Like you can't go to school and actually get a PhD in yourself. Although maybe someday yeah. you will. Um, that is true. Maybe, maybe we'll have the X, the UX and we could like bring them together. They could have a little <laughs> session. The that's USU funny. and the X. I love it. Yep. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Anyhow, here I am making strange. That's weird. That could be weird. See? Well, there you go. Bring yeah. it often. Should do yeah, it. but uh, yeah, you can definitely give yourself a complex. Like, well, man, am I like, really, am I weird enough? Like, am I outrageous enough, uh, right. you know, to, to get what I want? Yeah. yeah. Right. I, but I, th I think you can build anybody that has, no matter what your X factors or your strengths or your superpowers are, there, there is a solution. There is a way to get the life that we want. Mm -hmm. and it will present itself. It's only a matter of time and attention and focus on the problem. Let's put mm -hmm. it that way. Love it. What, before we wrap up practices, what, what are things that you do um, to keep yourself in a place of such a positive and proactive mindset? I'm always curious about mm -hmm. this. I love learning from others um, and hopefully our listeners too. What, what, what helps you, Matt? So a couple things. Number one, I do have a, uh, you know, relatively set morning routine. Now I'd love to be, as we all would love to be more consistent with things. I'd love to be more consistent with it, but I do have a routine where I do some breathing exercises in the morning, um, goal review, you know, affirmation, things like that. What's interesting is the thing that I'm working on right now with my own business coach is getting more in touch and integrating my conscious and my unconscious mind and what I'm working on right now is, is asking my unconscious mind to give me a good, help me have a good sleep overnight, help me to remember my dreams. And then when I wake up in the morning, bring focused attention to, okay, what did I dream about? And, and just kind of that, that, and that's been very helpful so far. Like it's affected my energy levels, my approach, my, my positivity, my enthusiasm, all that good stuff. And I, I anticipate that to get you know, way more impactful, the, the better I get at it and the more it's integrated into my life. I've literally just begun that process mm. within the last eight weeks, uh, maybe even six or seven. Um, and so, yeah, I'm still, I'm just now seeing the benefits of that, but I, I anticipate it being very, very big because it's something that it's, I've shut that part off and I've kind of disconnected from that for so long. Uh, and I know there's a lot of people out there that are, that are that same way that don't pay attention, don't, feel like they have dreams don't don't you know have anything like that that there's no like they're disconnected from their unconscious mind and um the psycho cybernetics is a really great book to to remind us of just how powerful our unconscious is mm -hmm. on whether we actually achieve our goals or not because it gets right down to the root of our self-image who do we really think we really are who do we think is the usu because mm -hmm. if we believe the wrong things about who the usu is and whether we can actually get there or not we're going to actually like all of our actions and our daily habits and all the decisions we make every day conforms to what we believe about who we are. Amen to that one. <laughs> I, I couldn't have said that better. I know, that was really deep for the end of a podcast. Interview. Oh, I love it. I know. And I'm like, why are we rapping now? This is, <laughs> this is what I live for. I love that. <laughs> so great. I was going to ask you if you had a book to recommend. It was like you read 100%. my conscious Matt. Okay. What's it called? So, Psycho Cybernetics. Yeah, it's a classic. This book is from the 60s. I literally can't hi cannot recommend it highly enough. I literally have my top five recommended books sitting down here on my bookshelf, and that's, you know, I would say number one or number two. What would be another one? Just because. Um, because I would go here. with this very fantastic, very short and readable book, The 22 Immutable Laws oh, yeah. of Marketing. Yes. Uh, and I don't care whether you're in marketing, I don't care whether you're even in business. Um, there's so much in there that really is rooted in human nature and just why stuff works and why stuff doesn't work. Uh, each chapter is a grand total of like two pages. So anybody can read it. It will literally give you a new way of looking at the world. It's phenomenal. Yeah, I agree with you. I read that yeah. book and it's, I remember reading it thinking like, why is this not, everyone should be you yes. have to read it. Yes. I literally want to, there's sometimes I literally want to roll the book up and throw it at people because you know, 
<laughs> just, <laughs> just read it. Just whack. Just read just it. Just read it. Yeah, yeah. There's a couple books. I know Thinking Grow Rich is another one that mm-hmm. um, is just, you're like, the whole world needs this. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah, right. that's how I felt about, uh, have you ever read Outwitting the Devil? No. By Napoleon Hill? Okay, so Outwitting the Devil didn't come out until 2013. They withheld it for 70 plus years. His wife would not allow the book to be released. It's amazing. Okay. If you like Napoleon Hill, you'll love, yeah. and, and, and just it'd be just very fascinating. It's the, probably the most unique book he's ever written. So if oh. you've read some of his other stuff, it's very, very different. Okay. Uh, but it's, uh, oh my God. But the stuff that he talks about, the, the uh, hypnotic rhythm, drifting, the, you know, the, having an, a, an intentional purpose. It's amazing, amazing stuff. So I won't, wow. I won't give too much away, but it's an amazing book. Yeah. Wow. This is great. I was just going to see abundance. I was going to ask for one book and we got three. Uh, well, it. I do have that problem. <laughs> yeah. No, it's great. It's, uh, it's perfect. I love it. Well, yeah. I feel like I was going to, so I love to end with just a question or two before we wrap. Um, is there, is there a quote or a phrase you've already kind of talked about some, but something mm-hmm. that really guides you that um, motivates you, inspires you. I, Always love to get words of wisdom. Yes. Um, one, of my, one of my friends interviewed one of the first, I would say, personal development pioneers, a guy named Bix Bixen. Mm. And the result of that conversation was the idea that you stand in the future and you decide what the future wants to look like and then you pull the present to it. And I know it's not like a direct quote, and it's, I'm, I'm paraphrasing for, to shorten it up like that. But essentially, it's, it's now, it's in my, it's in the paragraph that, it, that is in the very first paragraph of my dream for my life mm-hmm. that I read every day. It actually went into the mantra that goes into my breathing exercise that I do every morning. Um, and so, yeah, it's, that's one of the things where uh, I didn't, you know, it was really interesting and intriguing at the, at the time when I heard it, just that concept of standing in the future and calling the present and pulling the present into the future that you want. Um, but then I really made it intentional effort to like really like ingrain it into my unconscious by saying it every day, thinking about it every day, making it a part of my breathing exercises every day. And yeah, that it's changed my perspective about just how I make progress forward. It's not starting here and moving forward. It's standing out there exactly where I want to be and pulling myself towards that future I want by my actions. I love that. That's fantastic. I've heard it kind of said it's like you create the future you want to live into Mm -hmm. yeah exactly that's beautiful yeah powerful wow i um this has been awesome i've really really enjoyed speaking with you and having you here and i know people listening are going to get a lot of a lot of awesomeness and wisdom um and just appreciate you and your ux i don't know how to say that i'm like Mm -hmm. your usu your usu (laughs) it's just now I'm getting weird. All right. Well, so (laughs) seriously, Matt, thank you so much. And I will make sure um, that we have your info up on the show notes. So if anyone's Mm -hmm. thinking of starting a podcast or has questions Mm -hmm. about it or wants to, I mean, I highly recommend anyone that feels called to do that. Um, It's it's Mm -hmm. a great idea. You can really help serve a lot of people and great way to just expand your reach. And I know you're amazing at it. And um, I'll put your interest that people can reach out to you. um. Yeah, I was gonna say like one of your so uh, Dana Malstaff, the aka the boss mom, um, who connected the two of us, we produce her podcast. And so your listeners might be familiar with her. Uh, Yeah, if they if they want to do something like that, if you want to launch a podcast into the market for whatever reason, but I think the sweet spot for podcasting is breaking into a new industry. So if you're not already somebody, I mean, I, I can speak from experience, like podcasting in the space where I'm at. Um, it's taken me literally all over the world speaking. I was a nobody that worked at a vendor company four years ago. I, I have no right to be on stage with the people I'm on stage with that are way smarter than I am. Uh, and podcasting is what unlocked all of that for me. And it did it for me in 18 months and it can do that, that same thing for other people. And so, yeah, if that's, if that's what they want, um, pursuingresults.com. And then if they want a free kind of resource for how to start getting onto podcasts as a guest, which I recommend is the place to start before you actually start your own show uh, is just go to pursuingresults.com slash pitch because I've got a little guide there on how to research and find podcasts, how to pitch yourself, what to say in the email. I've got some template emails there for you. So it's the basics of how to get started. You can actually hand that over to an assistant or a VA and they could actually follow those directions and send the emails on your behalf. Awesome. That is fantastic. Okay. We'll have that pursuingresults.com. That's it. Great. 
So fun, Matt. Thank you so much. Thanks, Julie. And Appreciate we didn't it. even get to hear your music. By the way, everyone, he plays five instruments, but it didn't work for technology reasons. So not. maybe another time we'll do that. <laughs> <laughs> work on it. Facebook, right. uh, Facebook and Zoom need to get their act together, make it easy for musicians to play. Right. Yeah. Another conversation. Exactly. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so, so much. Thanks, Julie.